All right. Thank you so much for joining us on our 136th episode of Lunch Out Loud Auto. Of course, we're the podcast that talks to the people, places, events, and music that make this city the incredible city that it is. And what makes our city incredible are the local stores that have been around for ages because sometimes you just don't see that as much anymore. So we're so happy to have Michael Wallach here from Wallach's Art Supplies. But before we get to Michael, why don't we check this out? so much Mackenzie rhythm section so we've had them on before but I love having them on because they're one of the best live acts you'll see in the city uh, if you want to go out and like they're doing an album launch this weekend that's free to go to and you'll be dancing all night you'll be sweating you'll be dancing the new album's called brand new dances so right off the title of it you know you're going to be dancing uh, so Saturday 8 p.m. at Gainsbourg probably pronounced on Francais Gainsbourg. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> yeah, no. You can uh, visit their website at mrsmusic.ca. Uh, Search for Mackenzie Rhythm set uh, on uh, Facebook. And that song was Dying Man, so we'll be listening to a couple more songs for theirs in a bit. Of course, at halftime, we'll be talking to... Or Jen will come on from Foodie Prince. She'll be talking about some Christmas craft shows but also a beer school lunch which sounds very interesting and some uh, whiskey and scotch uh, things going on in the capital so some very interesting stuff coming on yeah you had me at the sweaty dance party in Gatineau yeah that's going to be a lot of fun holy geez if you if you have no plans for Saturday night I know there's tons of things going on on Saturday definitely get out there so I'm here with Michael at uh, Wallach Art Supplies in uh, the former Invisible cinema uh, yeah we're section. in an old movie rental uh office <laughs> so I, I bet a lot of people were wondering you know invisible cinema because it, it was that's a pretty cool uh niche little uh video store and yeah. a lot of people were wondering what's there now and now i know i didn't i had no idea yeah right. it's wallach's head office <laughs> <laughs> and so this yeah very open concept very interesting very nice and you have plans for this in the future as well. Yeah, I'm hoping to include it into the store, make it some sort of uh, artist hangout where anything from classes, workshops can go on to just uh, you know open studio space, create one big art center downtown Ottawa. That is awesome to hear. And of course, uh, like we get to what, what we ask all of our guests, maybe your favorite restaurant or uh, something that attaches you to Ottawa here. Well, Morgan. attaching me to Ottawa, definitely uh, El Camino's tacos are just, I'm addicted. The ox tongue is amazing. But recently I've been discovering Elmer and Elmer Road, and I'm talking deep Elmer. Uh, a really fun place I recently discovered is saint -Son. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, chef that runs the place, he's uh, a one-man show, and his wife is uh, serving and waiting on the tables. Everything is freshly made on the spot. It's high gourmet the chef is uh, Red Seal. Uh, the other morning I went for jambalaya omelets. So jambalaya, okay. Caribbean food, omelet. And uh, what kind of other food does it have at lunch or dinner? They or do have kind of lunch. Food? They don't do a dinner that I'm aware of, but they do lunches. Yeah, they do sandwiches. Stuff, yeah. They serve Bridgehead coffee, which is great really? because there's not a whole lot of coffee shops out there. 
uh, near where I am. So it's just it's a it's a fun dining experience. Uh, it's you know chaotic in there because this is a, a chef just sweating over the <laughs> over the grill, and it just the food is such high quality. But you do you do wait for the food because every dish is prepared right there in front of you. And wow, that's it. So I'll definitely be checking that. What any anywhere yeah. else? Uh, another one in Elmer is La Edgar. Uh, I don't know. I this place. Uh, I love uh, sandwiches. I tried their panini, and I've had paninis from here to Miami. And this is by far the best panini I've ever had. I even bought a bunch of their cookies and brought them into work. They it, their desserts just, are unbelievable. You know, I haven't had enough food there yet. I've only been there once, and already it, wow. went, it went up into the top top uh five ways i must have spent too much money in there just uh, all the to-go stuff i got and they looked at me like i was crazy because no, i kept adding no. more to my order <laughs> well mary's soul is amazing she was an awesome guest on our show uh a year mm-hmm. or so ago now a little while ago yeah right after she won gold medal plates ottawa so she's what an awesome woman and such a small little kitchen there too the number of them that are working there so it's a lot of fun all right so uh, you're you're the CEO and president of uh, Wallex, and uh, kind of what is your favorite type of art? I think people want to know what are you looking for in the art game these days. Well, uh, I don't have one particular favorite art. I do love abstract, okay. and I have my personal sort of uh, flair on what type of abstract I like. I like things that sort of incorporate abstract meets pop culture. Uh, Instagram has been really good to discover new types of art that are out there. Uh, I'm a huge fan of an artist who died not too recently, uh, David Balduke from Toronto. You can find his pieces in MoMA to Museum of Chicago, uh, Chicago's Museum of uh, Modern Art. It's all over the place. Speaking of modern, I love 1930s and 40s architecture. So, okay. you know, that's something that really interests me. But, uh, you know, when it comes to sort of like a cross between uh, mixed media meets graffiti meets abstract. Uh, that's the type of stuff I love. You really have to see it. Uh, but there's some we, good artists out there. And are we coming out with some good stuff in Ottawa? Some artists there's, doing this kind of art? There's a lot of really good artists in Ottawa. There's some people that are doing some really fantastic stuff. I mean, uh, uh, just the other day, I did a workshop with Guillermo, who's a printmaker. He's also a teacher at the Ottawa School of Art. His stuff is just really, really neat. Uh, if you like printmakers, uh, he brings this uh, really like hip and cool vibe, and he's just always so current with what he's doing. He has a show going on right now. My favorite pieces of his actually are from years ago when he did the sumo, the Mexican sumo wrestlers. Okay, so those are really cool. Um, you know, it's it's really inspiring too. I have a lot of friends that have been traveling. They went to uh, Berlin. Uh, some have moved to. Uh, obviously a lot of people have gone to Montreal to pursue art careers, but it's great to see so many people either coming back to Ottawa or, uh, and, and really just working it. Last night I ran into Whitney Lewis, uh, who's a photographer, yeah. if you're familiar with her. No. She used to show at Le Petit Moore Gallery. I'm not too sure where she is now, but you know she's another really aspiring photographer who does these really cool like taxidermy. Okay. Uh, she does these taxidermy setups where then she photographs them, and she has her own flair on how she does it. And it's just like, wow, this is so cool. This is something I want to look at all the time. And so she's back in Ottawa. Or she's she's busy? in Ottawa. She did some shows. She does a lot of traveling okay. for her art. Uh, she was in Mexico. I think she's going back down to Mexico again. So yeah, she's yeah, got a lot of cool stuff. stuff. Yeah. So she's really neat. Yeah, there's a lot of good people in Ottawa that are making a lot of really We'd good stuff. We'd love to hear that. And wh- one funny thing that I, I saw when I was doing, looking up this episode, uh, this used to be, or 231 Bank Street used to be the first Hartman's. I yeah. didn't know Hartman's was that long. Like the, well, it's not there anymore at your independent, but yeah. I didn't know how ingrained Hartman's was, was. Well, if you've ever wondered where we store the easels over stock, uh, we store them in the old meat locker. So it's still, no, I, yeah, uh, the uh, storage room is still metal walls, metal ceiling, has a drain in the middle. A lot of the floors, you can't see it from upstairs, but when you're in the basement, you can see where the old hoses went to uh, spray the produce. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's still a grocery store uh, foundation. It's uh, great. And then there's been some other businesses there too. Three Clowns, which I think was like a stationary party store. And it's been, uh, it's a very old building. And uh, so Wallex was started in 1939, and many generations of Wallex. What, what yeah. was growing up like in the uh, art community? Uh, growing up in the art community, uh, 
a lot of fun. It's definitely shaped who I am because there's just there's so many smart people with such a diverse view on the world. I've grown up with, you know, extremely conservative artists who have this very uh, methodical. This is how it's done to art and everything else in the world. To extremely crazy out there artists. You know, some of my fondest memories uh, still date back. When you look back to. Uh, as far back as you can go to kindergarten or whatever it is, however far, and you start to see all the memories that stand out, that's, that tells you who you are and what you like. And a lot of my memories are with artists like wow. Joe Plaskett, who's from England, or David Alexander, this crazy artist from out west who does these beautiful abstracts but of the Canadian landscape. And my memories are like, you know, walking past the American embassy and he's in a suit and tie and we're heading over to his vernissage and he points to me and I must have been like 10 at the time. He says, Michael, you see that squirrel? That's not just a regular squirrel. That's a squirrel with a microphone up its butt. And he starts to run down the street. And I'm just like, it's just like so crazy because these people just bring so much inspiration, you know, just live life and they love think life. Different, and totally they just, different. Everybody yeah. thinks so different. And uh, so it shapes you, not just in this like creative way, but in this approach to life and question everything around you. And, yeah, that's, and really that's, yeah that, you can get an education from that far more than I can. You know, you, you, you'd you be amazed at all the things I've learned from artists. Um, so you've been going to vernissages your whole my whole, whole life, life in Ottawa. My whole life. Uh, I was very fortunate that my parents treated my sister and I like we were adults from the time we were born. We went to all the vernissages. We were shaking hands with everybody, making sure good eye contact, having adult conversations, mm -hmm. and everybody treated us like adults. So it was great because we, we grew up having a, a good understanding of, of being an adult and the decisions that come with it. And, how to respect people and you know we're not talking about on the superficial sales level and talking you know people had genuinely good conversations asking you know what do we want to do how are we going to be so it was great and uh so i guess what are some trends now in the community because uh, like I, I i it must have been so different back before the internet i i don't know but i just assume a lot of a lot of changes in all types of business because of the internet it may maybe a little simpler back then with products, but now there's so many different products from around the world. Mm -hmm. How kind of what? Are, how have those trends changed in in Ottawa? Yeah, well, in Ottawa, I mean, there's you know a lot of product trends. Uh, some really big trends that are standing right now is sort of painting on uh, other surfaces other than traditional canvas or papers. So wood panels have become popular over the last couple of years. Right, yeah. And, you know, so now artists are looking at different wood panels, panels to get Pinterest has done a lot for that, no? I'm sure Pinterest has done a lot. Uh, you know, art supply stores like Wallach's carrying these types of panels. But a lot of people are doing uh, work on found surfaces. It's, it, it's really neat. And just incorporating, uh, I won't call it technologies, but incorporating more materials in it in their mixed media approach. So it's, it's really neat uh, to see you know, the surface of what people are painting on has changed just as much as what they're using has changed. I also like that a lot of people are getting more health conscious and environmentally conscious okay. with the products they're choosing. A brand that we carry uh, is Cobra uh, Water Soluble Oils, and uh, or uh, there's other water soluble oils that we also carry, which are extremely... Uh, you know, they're a lot better for you because you're not using the harsh solvents and chemicals to thin out your paints or to clean up, you know, when you have to clean up your brushes and clean up your palette, you had to use these solvents and then usually people are flushing it down the sink. These are water solvents. So you can do it all with water, better for your environment, better for yourself. I think also the big art trends that are happening now is the way artists are connecting with people and selling their art. Mm -hmm. Traditionally over the last 40, 50 years, Artists heavily relied on galleries to find the clients and, uh, you know, essentially work for the artist to bring people in to see their art and sell their art. I think a lot of artists uh, now have a lot more options and they really have to find out what's best for them, what's best based on their price point, what's best based on their work ethic, what's base best based on who they want to be as an artist. If you... You know, if you want gallery representation, you get more time to focus on your art and you need to be with a gallery that works for you and really connects you with those clients. And I'm going to say that probably if you have very expensive art, you need a gallery that can connect you with people who are willing to spend a lot of money in art who would like to have some sort of guidance or confirmation in what they're buying is the right thing. 
uh, but there's a lot of successful people that are doing it on their own and they're